Okay guys, let's get this started. You know it's the Joe Jaguar Show, and today I'm gonna to be comparing two Maxutovs. A Meat Maxutov at F15, uh, which is 1900 millimeter focal length, against the Skywatcher F12 Maxutov, which is 1500 millimeter focal length. Um, I'm just almost ready to get started. Uh, let me just do a couple things. Let me put a finder, uh, scope on these guys and let's get going. Okay guys, low power, the sky watcher, looks good. Um, the eye relief is just so big, man. Okay, right now I'm using an 8.8 .8 millimeter need 4,000 Japan made, ultra right angle, so it's a very good eyepiece. Scopes cool down a lot. And I'm at, what am I at? 216 power. So that's enough to see detail. Five inch Maxutov. What's going on? Two inch diagonal. That's what's nice about this sky watching one. I can, as an adapter, two inch visual back, and I can put a, I got a two inch diagonal right now. That is very, very nice. The scene division, the gap in the rain. I wonder if I could probably go even higher. I don't see why not. Image is not breaking down at all. It would be nice if it would have like a fine focus. It's a little bit rough, the focus of the Sky Watcher, but it's a nice image. Okay, let me see if I can even blow it more than 216 power. Um, it's not breaking down, so why not? Four millimeter um, radiant eyepiece. Maybe that's too much now. Okay, let's focus. Not bad at all. I mean, I still see it. It's not crystal clear anymore. It kind of broke down the image a little bit. But it's, without uh, fine focusing, it's just, you touch it and it just vibrates so much. Yeah, you can clearly see the Cassini division. No problem. 1500 millimeters divided by four, 375. That's that's quite a bit. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I should bring it down a bit. But let me let me back down the power down to 6.7 mead ultra wide angle, and uh, it's not as big. Okay, but I think a little bit sharper. So sometimes it's better to have a slightly smaller image with a sharper detail. Just trying to just let it like steady up. Yeah, it just it seems like it's not 100% focused. It's pretty good. Any new person would probably enjoy um, this this view of Saturn uh, what what are we at so let's see 1500 millimeter focal length by device 6.7 equals 224 power which is a good decent power for for Saturn uh, 125 millimeter a scope uh, double it is 225 power so we're pretty much at the maximum anyway but at the 375 it looked okay you can tell it was not crystal clear it was a little bit blown up uh, but it wasn't wasn't too bad either I've seen worse when you overblow it but it was pretty decent I let these guys cool for at least an hour actually it's probably at the time now it's probably been about hour and a half cool down time that's the one bad thing about Max. 
especially once you get to six and seven inch, uh, they take a long, long time. I once had a meat um, seven inch F15 Mac, uh, the high ultra contrast telescope one. It was uh, the OTA one. When Meads, just before they stopped making them, it was probably about 2008, does that make sense? Um, 2009 maybe they stopped making it, around there. And I had one of those with the mirror lock, so it was just one of the last ones before they stopped making it. And uh, now the biggest ones that they make is a six inch, which is still okay size, but maybe, uh, I think, a Mac that big and heavy, um, it was like 22 pounds, the Bear OTA. Um, the, um, it was, I, I guess there wasn't, uh, there's not as many people that buy than the seven, eight and above. It's just, it, it's a beast at that, um, that size. Anyway, I guess the point is, um, I used to get amazing views out of that guy. I remember some of the best views comparing to like a six inch refractor. Um, and sometimes it would take though an hour and a half to two hours, you would get very good views. But after the three hour mark is where the views were just excellent. So that's the problem with a closed compound type of scope, especially one that's big and heavy like that. Um, yeah, so um, that's that. Um, okay, L looks pretty good to me. So we're gonna stop for a while. Let me go on the other guy and uh, we'll be back. Okay, so the one thing I do like about the Skywatcher model is that you can put a regular diagonal on it and that way you can um, turn it to a better viewing angle where the Mead one, you can't. Um, although the Mead has the dual barrel viewing uh, for the 45 and um, You know, at the 90 and the 45 degrees, so that definitely is better. Okay, the focusing on the meat is smoother. So we're pretty much at the same power. An 8.8 .8 millimeter meat at ultra wide angle. Very good eyepiece. Just take a minute to enjoy seeing up in a seven millimeter eyepiece the uh, Nagler 7. Mead seems to have a little bit more image shift. Focuser is a little bit more smoother but a little bit more focus shift. Hmm. No both views are, are good. What am I at now? Remember the Mead's at 1900 millimeter focal length divided by Seven Nagler, two hundred seventy-one power. Yeah, that's. But uh, it still looks good. Hmm. Okay, you know what? Okay, you know what, guys? I'm gonna say this one's probably a dead heat. They're both very similar. Both are five-inch Matsutovs. Uh, the Mead one, it has a dual barrel where you can put a night piece at the ninety degree. You can, if you want to do daytime viewing, uh, land viewing has the option of buying that extra piece and you, it screws on, and you can do a 45 degree, or you could have the camera on the back side where the 45 degree is, and then your eyepiece on top, and you just flip the uh, switch, which that's always convenient. Uh, the Skywatcher is an F12 model, still 1500 millimeter focal length is still uh, narrow, a um, little less power, but that's still pretty long. Um, but as far as um, the quality, it seems about the same. Now, the focuser on the Skywatcher seems a bit more rough. However, I didn't really feel any um, uh, mirror flop um, type of thing on the Skywatcher, but getting fine, fo fine focus is a little bit tricky on it. Um, you just touch it and it just vibrates a lot. So not sure if you can kind of grease it more or make it 
um, more smoother. Uh, I don't know if they have an option for that unless, I'm not sure really, uh, you know, the Crayford um, SCT focuser, if that could be put on, that would be interesting. Then maybe that would be the best of both worlds. Um, and, you know, um, and I'm actually picking one up tomorrow. I wonder if it would fit this. It would be nice to try. The meat focuser is more smoother, but I see more mirror flop on it. Um, so it's, it's a toss up. Both are good. Uh, I'm going to say, um, so you can't go wrong with either one. The, the Mead Maksutov, uh, it's more power per eyepiece. Um, it has two slots for a camera and eyepiece uh, type of thing, or two eyepieces. Um, smoother focuser, but more mirror flop. The Sky Watcher, you definitely can put uh, a two inch diagonal. It's, it's probably not recommended, uh, really, um, but I, I don't see any mirror flop on this one, but it, it's the focuser is a bit more rougher. So that's my conclusion. I would say you can't go wrong with either five inch. Uh, Orion probably also has a five inch. So I'm gonna say here, both of these guys are pretty much identical. Quality's great. You, you're, you're not gonna be unhappy with either one. And I pushed it way beyond uh, the 50 times per inch. I was probably more at the 70 uh, power per inch, 75 maybe. And uh, that's it, that's it for this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel, like, comment. Uh, that's it for me tonight, guys. I'm gonna put everything away. Let me go have my cup of coffee. Um, and that's it, Joe Jaguar out.